Tough is that awkward kid of the Aces lineup. It struggles to find its place between its much more established uh, Prime and Rock siblings. But the B550 uh, chipset gives it a brand new sense of relevance, allowing a much more focused motherboard towards power and resistance, yet keeping it at a bottom dollar price tag. Today, we are reviewing the Tough Gaming B550 Plus, a gaming powerhouse which should outlive about any other component in your build. Well, in principle. But fun fact for you, in my younger days, powerhouse was also the name I used to give to my boxers. In a world of RGB and race to features, the tough lineup clashes with its competition in terms of how naked their layout appears. If a feature is not here to either uh, support power or resilience, well, you will not find it on a tough motherboard. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a 4PCB layered ATX motherboard, which does bring some concerns, at least at first glance, in terms of its PCIe 4.0 abilities and its VRM thermals. And as usual, I would rather have a 6PCB layers when talking of a PCI4 enabled motherboard, but the tough gaming B550 Plus really did very, very well in all these areas, to my surprise, and we will see why later on in this review. CPU socket-wise, it is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting third to fifth generation Ryzen CPU. In other words, PCIe 4.0 only processors, which has its importance because this is where all of our PCIe 4 enabled components will be sourcing their bandwidth from. Quick reminder, uh, this is a PCIe 3.0 and PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard, and the main difference is in its uh, bandwidth level. PCI 3.0 gives you one gigabyte per second per PCI lanes, PCI 4, two gigabyte uh, per second per PCI lanes. VRM wise, well, for a budget board, the TUF defends itself pretty well. We have 1050 amps power stages organized in five parallel phases or twin phases as Asus likes to call it, four of which are CPU centric. That is 400 amps of raw Power, which is obviously enough and more than enough uh, to run and, and moderately overclock any of the processors released to date by the Ryzen family. Now, 400 amps is not the most you, you'll find at that price range, and parallel phases is somewhat more or less, sorry, less agile than direct phases. But it is also much cooler, allowing really low temperatures even when dealing with only a 4 PCB layer board. Add to that rather adequate heat things with, let's note it, extended design for a higher radiating ratio, and you have a surprisingly heat efficient solution. Let's not forget to mention a tough specificity of this VRM. We have reinforced tough capacitors, and that is basically slang for a double the lifespan on non tough motherboard. Something that definitely adds a little bit to the longevity of your board. So, despite having some reserves on the PCB layering of our board, and some shallow hit sinks, I have to give it to Asus. Uh, with their Tough Gaming B550 Plus, they really did deliver uh, both power, stable, and heat efficient products. So that is my very first engineering kudos to Asus for this. Memory wise, our Tough Gaming B550 Plus supports up to 128GB of ddr in a dual channel configuration, clocking up to a raging 4.8 unbuffered gigahertz, but note that these kinds of clock will only work on a single stick. The more sticks you will add to your motherboard, the lower the maximum uh, clock will go. So keep that in mind. If you want to go really, 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 really raging uh, speeds, you're going to go with higher density uh, RAM on that one. Now, taking a closer look to our B550 chipset. Since our CPU takes care of the PCI 4.0 heavy lifting to fit our most performant components, the chipset can comfortably remain at PCI 3.0 standard without slowing down your build. It also means a much cooler chipset running at only 6 watt instead of 11. So no more need for an active cooling solution as seen on its X570 counterpart. As a result, we have PCI 4.0 bandwidth for the most performance-centric components of a build, 
through the CPU and in the same wall, manufacturers can keep the cost down of our board with a cooler chipset. So yeah, definitely a balanced choice coming from AMD here. Staying in the memory, we have two M.2 solid state drive sticks, which can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second. But since our CPU fed M.2 solid state drive support PCIe 4.0 standard, it can run potentially up to a whooping 64 gigabit per second, which obviously would be great for a boot drive. In both cases, our M.2 solid state drive sticks can get really hot really quickly. Fortunately, we have this beautiful long and thick heat plates, which does a great job at keeping our M.2 solid state drive cool at all time. Staying in the storage, worth mentioning the presence of our usual somewhat obsolete but reliable 6 SATA 3.0 plugs, which can all transfer data up to a bottlenecking 6 gigabit per second individually. Obviously, I'm still not a fan. I still have the hope that we'll find our way out of the SATA 3.0 standard to say 3.1, 3.2, far away from the 4.0, who knows? I can still dream. Export-wise, we have five PCIe exports, three bachelors and two 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes. Therefore, this is where you'd want your video card installed for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second 16 slot is capped at only four PCIe 3.0 lanes, so not really suited for GPU intensive tasks, which is fine because at that budget, uh, I did not expect much more. Anyway, this is a, a gaming motherboard, not a creative one, not a content creation one, so no problem here whatsoever. But I will underline the fact that PCIe 4.0 standard uh, on the export 16 slot will really not bring you any uh, a real performance gain, even though it gives you double bandwidth simply because all of our video cards, AMD or Nvidia, still uh, are to bottleneck the PCIe 3.0 standard. So great for future proofing, but that's about it. Back IO wise, first let me note the absence of integrated back IO plates, which I really don't care how cheap you want to make your motherboards. It doesn't cost much to add two little screws to get that plate fixed on the motherboard, which makes it so much easier for builders, first time or enthusiasts. So yeah, Asus, like what are you doing? Saving on what? Now, starting from the left, we have two 10 gigabit plugs, type A and type C, a CPU flashback button for easy BIOS recovery and update, four USB third generation plugs, our display outputs for Vega integrated graphics, including an HDMI 2.1 standard, perfect for next generation APU. I think the, the latest one of the 5000 series is called Cezanne and, and which will uh, definitely give us some 4K performance. So very, very happy to see it here. In addition, we have a DisplayPort 1.2. So integrated video, kudos for to Asus for that. Next, we have two USB second generation plugs. We have a 2.5 gigabit surge protected LAN, which is a great, um, Upgrade compared to the previous iteration of this motherboard and brings back this motherboard to the to the higher tier standard, which is also a really, really good point. And finally, and thankfully, we got our 8-channel ALC S12A audio codec from Realtek, which is about the very best integrated audio codec you can have in the industry. And I was very surprised to sit on such a budget motherboard, especially a four PCB layers. But despite being only four PCB layers, um, after testing the sound, um, I, I, I noticed no signal bleeding into their left and right audio channel, probably because they're still on dedicated PCB sheets and absolutely the best, both in playing and recording, which is extremely important, especially in non-grounded houses such as mine. Overall, the IO is rather well featured and most importantly, luxuriously done so. We have the 2.5 gigabit LAN, a very, very nice uh, audio codec. So maybe not the most featured, but definitely we have what we need and it does it really, really well. So I'll give it, despite the absence of an integrated plate, uh, IO kudos to Asus for this. Moving on to our front panel connectors. We have two second generation plugs, great for monitoring, a five gigabit third generation plug, and that's it. And, and, and a little critic here, I do not care again how low you want to go on budget. As a manufacturer, as a motherboard manufacturer, you should always have a front panel type C. 
all of the cases you're gonna buy or the good ones provide a front panel connector it doesn't cost much to add it and, and frankly talking uh, I find it really cheap not to have one here. So Asus on the next iteration of this board, or if you ever do a version two or a revisit of the B550 uh, Plus, add that front panel connector, please. Cooling wise, we have six PWM fans connector, including a single dedicated water pump. And obviously this is more than enough to have a solid airflow in your build and even uh, a run of what a dedicated custom water cooling solution but again these are not hybrid connectors which bothers me to my core because hybrid connectors really don't cost more uh, to add them to your motherboard and make your life so much easier you can either connect to it a pwm fan a dedicated water pump or even a flow sensor on every single one individually adding definitely a real added enthusiastness agility value to, to, to our motherboard. So yeah, something I definitely also want Asus to work on on the next iteration of that board. Troubleshooting wise, we got our easy debugger to get us through the booting process, which is what I expected to see on a PCI 4.0 enabled board. And we also have the flash BIOS button on the back that we've seen on the back IO. So we are clear on this one. But finally, this would not be a gaming motherboard without the madness, um, the, the, the excitement presence of a hash tray of RGB hash tray RGB connectors and 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 strips all over our board starting with a single RGB strip hidden under our chipset heat shield and three RGB connectors scattered all over our board including an addressable one in short you have enough lightning uh, radiation on this motherboard to conduct your own homemade CT scan in conclusion, at $160, the Tough Gaming B550 Plus is a solid choice. Probably not the most eccentric motherboard uh, out there, but something Tough should not be uh, shying from. It is a focused motherboard which orbits mainly around a solidly stable and powerful VRM and a few but premium features. Like I said, it shows less features than on its competition, but it is also its strengths, the fact that we have a naked layout, such a naked layout, with less, um, how to say, useless features means less signal uh, bleeding or signal interferences components to components, which I think is why we have such a stable and good product with only four PCB layers. So definitely a real engineering zen exercise which Asus conducted quite brilliantly I have to say. Gaming wise it is a solid choice which will juice out every iota of potential from all of your gaming centric components and it does so safely. My only real critic is I do believe that Asus could have saved another 10 or 20 dollars in the price tag of that already budget uh, budget priced motherboard because of the manufacturing process. Well, only for PCB layers, which is no handicap to the performance level of this board, which is a good thing, but it also means that is a cheaper motherboard to manufacture and there is no good reason for Asus not to pass down on that kind of savings to the consumer. So keep an eye on, on promotions of this board, which definitely will make it even more worthwhile your time. In all and for all, the Tough uh, Gaming B550 Plus is, is the perfect example of what a well-engineered, well-focused, reliable gaming board should look like and where your money needs to be. Yes, it is.